welcome to episode 2 of Tucker's Miracles. In this episode, we will be covering value threat theory. It is a common situation in most games where a player must decide which money should I target. Many players would look at this state and objectively say the pink lethal bunny is the biggest threat and should be targeted first, then the red lethal, and then of course the standard blue congenial. Value threat theory states that every card's value to the player is objectively equally a threat to the opponent. So since the pink lethal has a lot of value to the player, the opponents will consider it a great threat. Therefore, opponents should objectively retaliate proportionally. The bigger the threat, the bigger the retaliation. The more players ahead, the more high value cards you will use against them. A card's worth, therefore, is equal to its value minus its retaliation. Note that this theory only applies in groups with four or more players. Any group smaller than that, there may not be sufficient retaliations. Let's look at an example. Let's say you gain a carrot. That carrot has worth and until you are forced to return it. If that carrot is not returned at the end of the game, it has a worth of $10, quite simple. If you are forced to return that carrot, perhaps by a return a carrot card, you gained $10 value, and then you lost $10 value by the retaliation, meaning that carrot had a net worth of $0. If having the extra carrot provoked an opponent to excessively retaliate, it may actually be worth negative dollar. In theory, every card's worth should be zero, since every card's value should cause an equal retaliation. In practice, however, this doesn't apply, and this is actually the greatest strength of the value threat theory, is that it doesn't apply in practice. This allows for players to have control over the game through social interaction. And this is actually foundational to the understanding of all killer bunny strategy. So let's consider a situation from before. How many variables are there in actually choosing targets? Well, there are actually limitless variables in deciding which opponent is actually a threat. Let's consider a few. Just for example. The current value, which is what we discussed before, the pink gleeful, is worth much more than the red gleeful. There's of course the anticipated counter retaliation. If I kill that pink gleeful, how much will that opponent retaliate against me? There's of course the pass value. How much did they have before, and how much can I get away with by targeting them because of their past value? Future value. Perhaps you're really good at hand reading and good at countering the hidden investment strategy where a player may be keeping very impactful cards in their hand. Previous games, if that player is currently on a win streak, you may be more likely to target them. Game knowledge, this is one that affects players like me or Jeff himself, where if you are known to be a player who has excellent knowledge of the game, you are, by nature, a bigger threat. Of course, there's your reputation. This goes hand in hand with the anticipated counter retaliation. If you are a player who has a reputation as someone who's extremely aggressive, you may be targeted more and may be considered a bigger threat. And unfortunately, personal relationships can sometimes get involved here. If you had a real life disagreement with a player before the game, that disagreement may carry over into the game. And of course, much more. So when choosing targets, the question is, are there really obvious threats? The answer? Optimal strategies are group dependent, and therefore constantly shifting. As one strategy is found to be successful, another strategy will be used to counter it. Because the strategies are so diverse and all cards objectively have zero worth, 
besides social interaction influences. Luck of the draw, therefore, does not exist. If you get all high value cards, that will just make you that much more of a threat, and in all cases, the three players should be able to outvalue the one, no matter how high value ca their cards were. Strategies from all categories are ultimately rooted in varying applications of this theory. This has been episode 2 of Tucker's Theoreticals, going over the value threat theory. And as always, Jeff Bless.